just going to tell a story. At a younger age, when you know who you are, and you pinch yourself off, you, and society sets you up for this, it's funny how if you don't go back, you keep pinching yourself off, and you, like you always say, you say, why, 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 when it's always the emotion that you talk about, that you look for, and I tried many different things to or continue to do many different things that make it easier just to feel good. And I would like some explanation, or maybe if you were in our, in my physical shoes, some of the things that maybe when you were in the body, maybe eating well, exercising, some of the things that you can do just to feel really good about yourself and not necessarily have to think about all the details of what you want. Because, like you say, the vortex already has everything in there for you. Here's the rule of thumb that we would apply if we were standing in your physical shoes, and that is when we're feeling good, we would talk in greater detail about whatever it is we're feeling good about. And any time we're not feeling good, we would stop the talk. Go general. When you don't feel good, don't be specific because that speeds things up. And you don't want to speed yourself up in the opposition to what you want. So just talk more if it feels good and talk less if it doesn't. That really is the simple and very powerful tool. Do you understand that when you stand in any moment in time, that the non-physical part of you that we are calling your inner being is focused upon exactly what you're focused upon at exactly that same time and has a very strong perspective or you might even say opinion about what you're focused upon so if when you focus on it it feels really good to you that means you're so in sync with your inner being that your thriving is heightened but if you feel negative emotion that means the very thoughts you're thinking are in absolute opposition to what your inner being knows so when you're being hard on yourself or when you're regretting something or when you're remembering some put down that someone applied to you or some put down that you applied to someone else, it's really vivid. In fact, we want to put it to you in such a strong way. If your inner being didn't have such love and respect and understanding of your value, you could never feel the negative emotion that you feel because the negative emotion that you feel is relational to the way your inner being feels. So doesn't that make sense? When you're mad at yourself or down on yourself, that's proof of how your inner being feels. The more you hate something, the more proof there is of the love that is there that you're denying in that moment. Who? Once you get that in your consciousness, then that sense of worthiness and that sense of right place, right time comes forward. You've said something a time or two here that we want to help you to feel clarification about. And that is, yeah, it does feel like life's doing things to you. And it does feel like others are doing things to you. It feels like people in power or people in control can affect your experience. Because if they weren't doing that, you wouldn't be feeling this. But there is no assertion in this attraction-based universe. So the hard and sometimes suck it up buttercup uncomfortable truth of it is you're doing it all to yourself and as our friend before acknowledged very often your inner being called you into things to give you clarification you would not have a vortex like you have at this early age if it were not for the life experience that you've lived and every bit of that was intended as you made the decision to come into this physical experience. So many choices about so many things that are serving you so well, you see. And so here you are, thinking very clearly, understanding the process, and on your way to deliberate creation. Whew. There is no sweeter living of life than to have launched a rocket maybe even unconsciously somehow come into awareness that there's something that you want that you're not a vibrational match to because your negative emotion is letting you know it and then focus yourself into positive emotion about it and then watch the universe yield it to you that conscious realization or association between the thoughts that you have deliberately been thinking and the manifestation that follows there is no greater high or greater enthusiasm or greater zest or greater awareness of your purpose of life than that talk about enhancing your sense of worthiness you see 
No one else can pronounce you worthy because nobody else can pinch you off from the abundance that you seek. It's only you that can pinch yourself off. So it's only you that can open up to it. So you have to prove isn't exactly the right word that we're wanting Esther to find, but you have to demonstrate to yourself what your vibrational acuity is and then just practice it and then watch others stand in astonishment as they see you say it and mean it and get it over and over and over again teach to the clarity of your example I don't talk about what I don't want and I don't listen to others talking about what I don't want if I'm at a dinner table or at a party and they're talking about lack or sickness or things that I don't want, I get up and I go find something else to do and I come back and if they're still talking about it, I get up and I come back. And if they're still talking about it, I get up. And if I come back and they're still talking about it, I get up. Do not endure conversations coming out of your mouth or anybody else's mouth about yours or anybody else's deficiency. And don't walk away in anger. You're not running away from what you don't want you never can you run away from it it just comes right along with you like the toilet paper that you've got stuck in your shoe <laughs> go to where you want to go in other words and look back smiling at them love you guys talk to you when you start talking right <laughs> I love how good it feels to talk with you and move the energy in certain ways that gives me a much better perspective on what I'm doing right and wrong you're never doing anything wrong you're doing some clarifying things how do you find your balance how do you find your balance if you don't test it a little bit how do you know what feels good if you don't allow yourself to know what feels bad how do you know what your inner being really thinks about you and other things if you don't think in opposition to it sometimes how do you know you wouldn't you wouldn't know mm -mm. and it's helpful to remember Sometimes your inner being will call you through something that you think you don't want on your way to something that you do want because the clarification is necessary. Because you've already created it, how are you going to define the specifics of what you want if you don't have some association with it in order to define them? Did you hear that? That is so important. It's so important to acknowledge that in earlier conversations we've been talking about the emotional scale where vulnerability or fear are in the worst feeling place and then there's anger which feels way better and then there's blame and guilt and overwhelmment and frustration long before you get to any of those feelings that feel like appreciation and love and joy and all of that sort of stuff and so if you're feeling like a victim, anger is your friend. Your inner being is calling you and can call you from despair all the way into joy. You just can't hear it. That's what we were talking about with our friend earlier. But you can hear the inspiration to anger because you're close enough to it. You can hear that. So others will look at you and think, oh, Abraham, that can't be right. You can't be saying that someone's inner being someone who's source energy would actually call someone to anger yeah call you into anger because it's so much better than the despair that you're feeling or the vulnerability that you're feeling or the victim that you're feeling and so that anger is a step in the right direction and yes indeed your inner being is calling you not to stay there because your inner being is going to keep calling you from anger revenge all of that right through it into hope and so on but your inner being is always calling you Talk about a friend, talk about support, talk about someone who knows, talk about never ending love, talk about understanding who you are, you see. So the more you know that, the more you are likely to listen for that, to feel for that until in time, those vibrations are rarely in your experience. They will never be completely gone because you're going to be eager for life and looking for more experiences and wanting more exposure and wanting to put more things into your vortex. But it's all good, you see. Another question I had is, since we all create our own reality, on what scale, or I should say, on what level does co-creation come together? Every level. And collective consciousness on collective beliefs. Give us more about that. So, it's like the story of a hundred monkeys. When you set food 
uh, down in the sand. They eat it even with the sand, but you teach a monkey to clean it off in the water, another monkey teaches and so many, and then eventually all the monkeys know. Yeah. So on a collective level, once enough people pick it up, when so many people get into the vortex, does everybody start getting in the vortex? Well, here's a distinction that we want to make. So in the same way that you have created your vortex for yourself, there is a collective conscious vortex. And that vortex is not just made up from what those of you who are sharing the planet at this time have contributed to it. It's the combination of everything that everyone has asked for. In other words, it's the best that all of you, including the beasts of your planet, have asked for. And so it is a mass consciousness vortex of well-being that source energy is standing in and holding steady for mankind individually and collectively to find their vibrational alignment with now what you are talking about you're talking about the same thing but two different things you're going to understand this clearly as this unfolds here so we've been talking about this vortex and that's what you're talking about when you're talking about the contrast that causes that vortex to expand and to become then today we've been reminding you that this vortex is pulsing and law of attraction is gathering to it and provided you are in a vibrational place that you are not resistant to your own inner being you'll find yourself in sync with what's going on in that vortex so that what's in the vortex can be translated by you into the physical word equivalent so in your story and it's a good one one of those monkeys was in vibrational alignment in a stronger way and received an impulse or a thought that it followed through with and created something that as far as this story goes no one had ever done before now nobody knows how many monkeys were off by themselves individually getting ideas for things <laughs> but what you call the instinct of the animals is all about that the birds flying in the sky haven't you ever wondered who's the leader what's happened they're tuned in and there is one mind that is guiding them it is a collective consciousness that they are all tuned into they don't have a leader they have a collective consciousness leader so here's the distinction that we're wanting to make with you so there is a difference between that monkey who received the idea and followed through with it and then the mimicking of the behavior of the others and we really are talking about two different things because humans are constantly mimicking each other that's where your conversation with us began today the society and parents and teachers and adults and authorities around you were all trying to teach you about the society that they want you to mimic that's not what we want to talk about here we're not talking about mimicking we're talking about tuning in we're talking about inspiration we're talking about following your own guidance you see it is all part of the same thing but it's not the mimicry we are wanting to guide you from that we want individual inspiration we want your guidance to come from within you and the beasts of your planet they are so good at that man superimposes his analysis of what went on over that and distorts that story all over the place the beasts of your planet are much more tuned in to inspiration and intuition and what humans therefore want to call instinct you see really good conversation we want you to be as creative as the monkeys that's what we're really asking for here <laughs> We're wanting you to get tuned in. Maybe that should be the next book. How to be as brilliant as the monkeys. <laughs> because humans in your wanting to socialize sort of drum out your intuitive resources. And then so many flounder because they're not tuned to that always consistent always good for you calling but instead to the confused calling of humans who decide that this is how it should be and who orchestrate things and ask you to mimic it rather than be inspired to it